Welcome to the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Turn them off that we will have no problem in the service. Yes, and please take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He says, but you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Not just a priesthood, but a royal priesthood. And you are a holy nation. And you are a peculiar people. Well, what do we do? That you show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness mm -hmm. into this marvelous light. Yes, sir. Now, in times past, we were not a people, but are now the people mm -hmm. of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Mm -hmm. And since we are, he said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers, as pilgrims, to abstain from fleshly lust, which wars against the soul. Right. Since we are his people, we are supposed to act like somebody. Right. Yes. We're supposed to abstain from these things that wars against the soul. Peter put it this way in 1 Peter 1.16. Because it is written, be you holy, because he is holy. Right. And so today I want to talk about the fact that we are held to a higher standard. Amen. You know, as Christians, we are held to a higher <coughs> standard right. because we're, we're not like the world. We're just different. And, and, you know, the instructions that Jesus gave us, for example, in Leviticus 11, verse 44, even the Jews, for I am the Lord your God, you shall therefore sanctify yourself, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of creeping things or creep, that creepeth upon the earth. It wasn't about really the, the pig or the catfish. or it, These things were just designed so we'll be, they would be separate from the other people. Yeah. So because they follow God, they couldn't do these things because they are separate. It was a way of God keeping them separate from other people because they were God's people. Right. And so... The Jews were amenable with that. But you know Jesus came and telling us stuff like that? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now how are you going to do that? Because you can't be like the world. Mm -hmm. Because we're held to a higher standard. Yeah. And 1 Peter 2, 12, Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that wherein as they speak against you as evildoers, that they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the dead. People are going to say things, bad things about you, right? but, but, it, but it, it should be true. Okay. They're going to speak about you, but when they see your life, they're going to have something else different Amen. to say. Man. So the first thing I want us to know is we're in this world, but not of this world. We're held to a higher standard. Even though we are standing in our job by other people and we are on our, uh, in the classrooms and we are by side other people, we're held to the higher standard than they are. That's right. You remember your parents used to say when you go to school, you got to do better than the next person. Yeah. You got to ex ex excel even more. Well, as Christians, that's even more prominent because we're in this world, not of this world. And that's why Peter, I mean, Jesus' prayer was in John 17, 15. For I pray not for that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. For they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Right. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Mm -hmm. As thou hast sent me into the world, so I also send. So we in the world, but not of the world. Right. We, we held to high standard. We can't live like other people live. And we can't do what other people, you, you remember, we used to come home and tell our parents, well, Johnny did. Yeah. And what they said, Johnny jumped off a bridge. Would you jump off a bridge? Yeah. So we're held to a higher standard. And he said, 
His apostles are in the world, but not of the world. And so he starts saying stuff like this. In Matthew chapter 4, 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Mm -hmm. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel, under a basket, but on a lampstand that gives light to all who are in the house. Mm -hmm. What's the reason for lighting a, 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 a candle? And so you can have light. Right. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. We're held to a higher standard. You can't be out in Publix or Win Dixie mm -hmm. or Costco acting right. a fool. All right. Because we're held to a higher standard. Right. Even though we're in this world, we're not like this world. We shouldn't be. We are the light. This light is supposed to shine. The light is supposed to shine in your life, in my life, because that's what we are. We're Christians. Amen. Brother Wade, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Ephesians 5, 8. What does he say? When you were sometimes dark, but now are you light in the Lord. Right. Walk as children of light. Now, how, what kind of walk is that? What kind of walk do you walk as a child of life? It's how we live our life. We're supposed to walk like people can see us. Yeah. We don't walk in darkness. People who walk in the darkness don't want everybody to see them. Mm -hmm. But we don't mind people seeing us and looking at our life because we walk as children right. of light. Mm -hmm. What else, brother? For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness mm -hmm. and righteousness and truth. Right. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. How we live our life is proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. If they ought not be talking about us and it be true, right. it's how we live our life that's, that should be what God would have us to do. What else does he say, brother? And have no fellowship. How much? No fellowship. Uh -huh. With the unfruitful works of God. We need to leave it alone. And in Philippians 2.15, brother. Philippians 2.15, what does he say there? That you may be blamed mm -hmm. and harmless, the sons of God, right, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Don't you know we're living around some crooked people? Mm -hmm. We're in the midst of a crooked, but we need to be the ones who live it right. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who are held to a higher standard. Right? If you don't know it, you better know it. You know, when you got ready to go off to college and your parents said, you're a Jackson, you better go up there and act like a Jackson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't you go up there cutting a fool. You better act like somebody. That's the way we are as Christians. Yes. We, we need to act right. Yeah. What else does he say, brother? Among whom he shine as lights in the world. The, wor the, the world is crooked, but guess who's shining? Yeah. We are. That's right. What else? Holding forth the word of life. It's like we're holding the lamp. <laughs> We're holding forth the word of life. Yes, That's what we're doing. You know what he said in 1 Timothy 3.15? But, but if I tarry long, that thou should know how thou behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And what does a pillar do? A pillar holds up things. Right. Guess who holds up the truth? You, we do. Guess what we need to do? Keep our hands up. Yes, keep our hands up on the job and, and keep our hands up in this classroom. And keep our hands. We're the pillar and the ground of the truth. So we need to act like somebody. Amen. So we are held to a higher standard. Yes. But not only that, I want you to know that we're held to a higher standard by the way we think. We just can't think like the world. The world will tell you to do anything. You know, they say it was a thing online. Uh, the guy put it put in online a, a question: Should I cheat on my wife? And everybody right now say, Yeah, yeah, that's what you should do. You know, as you happy. You can't think right. like the world, because right. whatever question you put out there, they're gonna give you a favorable answer, mm -hmm. and they don't care how you live your life or what you do. I'm telling you, you just can't do it. Nope. So we have a higher standard by the way we think, because this is what Jesus said. And Matthew 5, verse 20. For I say unto you, unless your righteousness exceed that which of the scribes and the Pharisees. Huh? Mm -hmm. I thought the scribes and the Pharisees were the ones that knew the law. Mm -hmm. I thought the scribes and the Pharisees were the elite mm -hmm. of that time. 
He says our righteousness must exceed their righteousness. And says, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard it said that there was a, those of old, you shall not murder, or whosoever murder will be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with that brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. Have you ever been angry with somebody and they don't even know you're angry with them? And, and the Bible says you held to a higher standard. You can't do it. We got to watch how we live our life. That's what I'm trying to show you. The way we think is not the way the world thinks. Mm -hmm. You know what else Jesus said in Matthew 5, 27, Brother William? In Matthew 5, 27, what did Jesus say there? You have heard that it was said by them of old times, uh -huh. that thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, uh -huh. hath committed adultery, with her already in his heart. He said, if thy eye offend you, pluck it out. If thy hand offend you, cut it off. If that, what else is it? Foot? If that foot, <laughs> cut your foot off. He's not literally telling you to pluck your eye out. He's not literally telling you to cut your hand off. But he's telling you not to touch things you shouldn't be touching. All right. All right. And he's telling you not to look at stuff you know you don't have any business looking at. Somebody said, well, Brother Jackson, it doesn't hurt to look. Oh, yes, it does. Ask David. Because the more you look, the more you're going to want to do something. And what he's saying is that we can't think like the world. Why? Because we're held to the higher. We're going to act like somebody. Your, your mom ever told you that? <laughs> you're in the store cutting up, and she said, you're going to start acting like somebody. Yeah. Brother Williams, in Matthew 5.33, Matthew 5, what did Jesus tell us there? Matthew 5, 33. What does he say there, brother? Again, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thy home. You, 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 you make an oath, you're supposed to just do it. You shouldn't have to make an oath. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to court and, you, and you're a witness and they say that you promise to tell the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. But that should be our lives. If you don't want to say it, just say, I don't want to say it. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you is that we are held to a higher standard by how we live our lives. And you know what he said in Matthew 5, 37, but let your communication be yay, yay, and nay, nay. If you say yes, it should be yes. If you say no, it should, whatever it is, just let your word be your bond. Because you're held to a higher standard. All right. And this is what he said in Philippians 2, 14. You wouldn't believe this. He said, do most things oh, without murmuring. Oh, oh, do some things without complaining. Oh, Everything you do, you're supposed to stop complaining and stop murmuring. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Can you do that for one week? <laughs> Can you go one week without complaining? Now don't lie now. You're in the church building. Yes, sir. Can you go one day without complaining? Can you go one hour without complaining? He said, do all things without murmuring and complaining. You know why? Because we held to the higher standard. I want you to walk out of here with your head up today. All right. Because we are the people. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. You are a, 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 a royal priesthood. You are all of those things. So you are held up to a higher standard. And I want to know today, will you be what God would have you to be? All right, right. Because the world needs a light. If you don't know, this is a dark world. Yes. The, we were talking about the family that man was 80 something, his wife was 80 something, and they had been married 60 years. Somebody yeah. come in there and kill them. Yeah. 60 year married. And, and, and the people just, just take their car. For what? Yeah. I'm trying to tell you this world is dark, and dark we're world. supposed to be the light yes, of the world. And we can't go around acting a fool. All right. We need to act the way God would have us act. So how are we different? Because we're growing in the grace. Now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, how do you grow in grace? I know how you grow in pounds, because if I keep eating it, I put it on. And I know how you grow in education. I know, well, how in the world can we grow 
and grace. Because the Bible tells me in 2 Peter 3, 17, you therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked and fall from your own steadfast. Peter should know because Peter denied the Lord three times. Yes, sir. Peter said, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you got to beware because you can fall away. He said, this is what you need to do. But you need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to grow in grace. I want you to grow in grace. But I'm just trying to figure out how do you do it? Because we're different than the world. Somebody saw a preacher, you just like we are. You make mistakes just like we must make mistakes. You say some things wrong just like we, you know different. Yeah, but the difference in me and you is I'm trying to grow in grace. Right. You're just trying to do what you want to do and keep doing whatever you want to do. You have no concern about God whatsoever. Right. And I'm trying to do better and better and better. Right. Oh, I know we're only human. Mm -hmm. I know we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But our intent is to grow in grace and to do better and better. And that's what he said in, in Acts 20 and verse 32. He told them, he said, Now, brother, I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Oh, we grow when we get into this word and learn this word. That's how we're going to grow in grace. The more we learn and the more we apply this in our life, that's how we grow. Oh, I see how we're going to grow in grace. But see, you're in the world. You don't care about what. You're not into the word at all. You don't care about how you live and what you. But here I am. I'm trying to grow in grace. You know why? Because we held to a higher standard. We need to act the way God would have us to act. So, Brother Wade, in 2 Peter 1, verse 5. We're going to add some things. In order for us to grow, we can't stay where we are. We have to continue to add, add, add. You know, if you send your child to school and they're in the fifth grade and they're reading on the first grade level, you know what you're going to do? You're going to go out there and talk to that teacher. And you're going to want to try to find out what's going on. You, you want your children to keep adding and adding and keep growing and growing. That's the way we are as Christians. And this is what he said in 2 Peter 1 verse 5. 2 Peter 1 5. And besides this, all right, keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. Add to your faith virtue. Right. And to virtue knowledge. Now you got to add to your faith. You got faith, because without faith it's impossible to please yeah. God. Mm -hmm. But you got to add to your faith virtue. Mm -hmm. How you treat people, and how you live, okay. and how you do other people, how you treat other people. You got to add that. And to, the, to your virtue, you got to add knowledge. Mm -hmm. You can't stay the same. We, we got to keep growing and growing and growing. And what else? And to knowledge temper. Self-control. You got to learn how to control yourself. Right. You can't be doing the same thing this year that you did last year that you did five years ago. You got to start adding. Mm. And what else, brother? And to temper patience. Now, that's a hard word, isn't it? Mm. You know, patience is hard. Because we don't have, well, I don't have, let me just speak for myself. I don't have the patience that I need, but I kept to keep adding to this. And what else, brother? And to patience, godliness. How we live our lives is godliness. Mm -hmm. How you treat people is godliness. You're not God, but you're going to act like God would have you to act. Mm -hmm. What else, brother? And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. We're supposed to love our brothers and sisters. We're not talking about your biological Brother, we're not talking about just brother and sister you grew up with. We're talking about brotherly kindness with people of the body of Christ. Yeah. You know, we got to learn to get along, right? You, you got to learn with your biological brothers and sisters. You might, you might be mad with them, but if somebody else bothers them, you were in for a fight. <laughs> so we need to be the same with us. Brotherly kindness. And what else, brother? And to brotherly kindness, charity. We're supposed to love one another. Man. And what else did he say? For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what you're doing? You're growing in the grace. That's why you're held to a higher standard. You're not just trying to stay where you are this year, the next year. You're trying to grow in the grace. You're trying to learn more and more about the Lord and how he would have you to live. That's how we're held to a higher standard. And Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Titus. 2 
What does he say there? For the grace of God that brings right. salvation hath appeared unto all men. Now grace came. And grace is available to everybody. Everybody won't accept it, but it's here. Yes. And it came teaching something. What did it teach us, brother? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's how we need to live. And we and, and we, we need to act like somebody. All right, huh? Brother William, in Hebrews 4.12. I, I got that. Hebrews 4 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful mm -hmm. and is sharper than any two edged sword, yes, piercing is. even to the division of the soul and of the spirit and of the joint and of the marrow and is a discerner of the intent of the heart. So this word of God will lay you open. Mm -hmm. It will lay you open if you're honest with yourself. It will tell you what you need to do and how you need to do it. The word of God says you have to hear his word and believe what he says and repent and confess and be baptized. And somebody say, you don't need to be baptized, but his word will slice you open because it will tell you the truth. All right. The truth of the matter is that Jesus said he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of seeing people on television saying, let the Lord come into your heart. Yeah. Just to say this prayer or yeah. accept this. No! no Jesus, Brother Walker. John, Mark 16, 16. Mark 16, 16. Because you might not believe me, but I know you'll believe Brother Walk. All right. All right. Mark 16, 16. I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Because I was watching television this morning. My wife was watching television this morning. And, and she was telling me that that's what they said. They said, just let the Lord come in your home. And sometimes I'm telling you the truth, I get tired. But when I hear this kind of stuff, I, I said, I just got to keep going a little further. Yeah, little going, going. So Mark 16, 16, what did he say, brother? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now who's saying that? Jesus. Jesus Christ is what, who said that. I'm so sad to see people in the last day standing in front of the Lord, and they're going to say, well, I accept you in my heart, Lord. I'm ready to go in. And they're going to say, I said the sinner's prayer. I'm ready to go in the gate. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is going to say, whoa, 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 where do you think you're going? <laughs> Because you haven't done what I told you to do. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad. Please, I want you to do what God says. But once you become a Christian, we're held to a higher standard. Right, right. We, got, we can't act like the world. Act, we can't do what the world does. Mm -hmm. it's, we got to be different. The only way the light, our light is going to shine is that we're different. But if we're doing the same thing they're doing, then there's no difference in us. Amen. Somebody say, a ship is made to float in the water. And the ship can float in the water. And there's no problem. But the problem comes when the water gets in the ship. Yeah. Somebody say, the, the church is made to be in the world. And the church is made to be a, a light in the world. Mm -hmm. But the problem comes when the world gets into the church. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell you, we can't act like the world. Yeah, we got to be different than the world. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said in John 1.14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Yes. John bare witness of him. And Christ said, This was he which whom I spake was he that came after me and is preferred before me. Now how can he be after John and in front of John at the same time? Yeah. Either you were born before John or you were born after John, for how can you be born both times? Mm -hmm. Because he's the son of God. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say, and in the fullness have all, have all we received from grace to grace. Now you had some grace under that old covenant, mm -hmm. but you really got grace now with Jesus right, Christ. Right. He said, yeah, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth Amen. came by Jesus Christ. Don't you try to go back under that stuff. I'm trying to show you how to grow in grace. And I'm telling you that we are held to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. But one more thing I want you to remember, you got to remember where you come from. Right, that's right. Just because you're held to a higher standard, just because you're a holy nation, a peculiar people, a, 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 a royal priesthood, don't get too big for your britches. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, a little success makes people think they're something. 
You know, I start walking around with the chest out real tough. They start thinking, no, remember where you come from. Yes, sir. Because we are all of those things. But it's only because of the grace of God that I am Amen. what I am. Yes, sir. And so the Bible tells me in Titus 3, verse 2, he says, I want you to tell these people this. He says that to speak evil of no man. Oh, I know you, I know you're held to a high standard, but I don't want you to speak evil of anybody. He said, be not abroad, but be gentle. Showing all meekness to all, showing meekness to all, to all who? To all men. Amen. Well, I'm not going to show meekness to him because he's a Republican. <clears throat> and I'm not going to show meekness to him because he's a Democrat. I'm not going to show meekness to him because he lives on the east side and he lives on, no, show meekness all right. to all. Don't get too big for your britches. And what he's telling you is that you got to remember where you come from. Oh yeah, we're held to a higher standard, but you're just better than you used to be. You remember you used to do some of that same old stuff. Mm. Brother Wayne, you remember when we used to go to the club? Yeah. Hey, you remember we used to do all that same old stuff, and now you've forgotten that you used to do it, and you walking around like this. I'm better than you. I'm better than No, you're not. We all are the same. God has blessed us all. Yes, sir. He says, for we ourselves also were, remember how you used to be? Uh -huh. You were sometimes foolish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you used to be disobedient and deceived, mm -hmm. serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and ending hateful and hating. One. Remember how you used to be? Right. Don't go around, around, around like you're so big. Right. You, you're held to a higher standard, but don't get it twisted. We are who we are because of God. Amen. Not because you're so great, uh, yeah. and not because I'm so great, okay. but because our Heavenly Father is our Father. Okay. That's right. He goes on to say, but after that, the kindness of the love of our God, our Savior, to a man appeared. Once God came and appeared, that's how we changed. But I want you to remember where you came from. You know, he said in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 10, Not, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. None of you guys are going to enter that, that kingdom of heaven. Right. And that's good, right? They shouldn't get in there. Mm -hmm. But you know what else he said? And such were some of you. Remember, you used to be that way too. You change, they could change. Yes. You see somebody on the, on the corner and they begging and they don't. You know better than they are. It, no matter who they are, God wants all to be saved. It doesn't care. He doesn't care where they come from or what they. God wants all to be. Saved. And He says, "Such were some of you, but you know what? But you were washed. But you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our." That's how you made it, cause you were you were baptized for the remission of your sins, and just like baptism took away your sins, baptism will take away theirs too. Mm -hmm. But don't walk around like you better than somebody else. Yes. Oh, I know we're held to a higher standard, and we should act right, and we should treat people right. But it shouldn't go to our head that we're just so much better than somebody else. Right. In Ephesians two, verse one, he says, "And you." He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, and which once you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. You know, there's a prince to the power of the air. You know what that is? That's Satan. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is, is our prince. Yes, is. But there's another prince. There's a prince to the power of the air. That's Satan. It depends on which prince you're following. All right. But I'm trying to show you is that we used to be that way. We used to follow the wrong prince. But now, we've been changed according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit who now worketh in sons of disobedience. But now we've been changed and we've been washed. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to show you is, is that we are held to a higher standard. You need to walk with your head held up. Yeah. But you don't forget who butters your bread. Yeah. You don't forget who saved you. you. Don't forget who gave you this breath. Yes. You don't forget who gave you life. You don't forget all the blessings that we have is because of God. All right, man. All right. That's the problem with success. Success can go to people's head. Right. Once you get a little success, then when you start thinking you're better, we're no better than anybody else. We're just better than we used to be. And in Isaiah 64, verse 6, but we 
are all as unclean things, and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And on our best day, you know what we are? A filthy rags. And so we can't get the big head. We can't get the mindset. Well, you know, uh, uh, since I don't do that anymore, and, and I'm better than you, no, no, no. You, you got to remember, you weren't always who you are. You said, well, God need to come back and, and, and judge all of these people because they're doing wrong and look at this world and he need to come back and judge these people. Well, you're glad he didn't come back when you were out there. Because yeah. we all been out there now. And you, you want to talk about God judging the people when you were out there. And God gave you a chance and we want God to give up. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering of us with not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. Yes. Second Peter 2 9. And so that's what it is. He's, he wants us all to come to repentance. And in Romans 3 9, what then? Are we better than they? Are we better than us? Are we better than the world? Are we better than they? No, no, and no eyes. For we who for we have before proved that both Jew and Gentile, that they are all under sin. For it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the walk said we all short men, all short people, because we've all come short. Amen. And so I'm trying to tell you, we're held to a higher standard. But because we're in the world, but not of the world. We're in the world. But we can't act like the world because we're different. And we're held to a higher standard because we don't think the way the world thinks. The world thinks that a vendetta, you get them before they get you. You treat people the way they treat you. But God said you treat people how you want them to treat you. We don't think like the world. We're held to a higher standard because we're growing in the grace. We're growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Opening this word, reading this, that's the only way your grace is going to matter. We're going to grow in grace. We're held to a higher standard because we remember where we come from. Right. Isn't it the height of folly that your parents did so much for you and you get up and you start treating them like they're dirt and treating them like they're nothing? Well, what about God? God has blessed us and done so much for us and we treat him like he's nothing. We won't come to church. We won't read our Bible. Right. We won't pray to him. We won't give him a dime out of our pocket. And we say, God, I love you. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm telling you, you got to remember where you come from. Remember how you used to be down. Right. And remember how God blessed you. And remember who set you up and gave and put you up on the right way. And God is the one that blessed us. So I'm trying to tell you that we're held to a higher standard. We need to act like something. Man. He said, well, I'm not a Christian. What you need to do is hear his word, Romans 10, 17. And then you need to believe what he says, Hebrews 11, 6. And then you need to repent. Uh, Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And you're going to have to confess with the mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And, and Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, and when I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Brother, what do you think? Matthew, chapter, John, chapter 5, verse 30, 34. John 5, 34. And you're going to have to be baptized. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And I want you to know, once you become a Christian, God expects me. And God expects you. And God expects all of us to act like somebody. That's what made us holy because we're affiliated with him. That's why they told him they couldn't eat this or touch this. There's nothing wrong with just touching something. But he was showing you that because you're affiliated with God, you can't be like you were. That's right. And what did that say? Okay. But I received my testimony from me. Uh-huh. But these things I say that you might be saved. Okay. He was a burning and a shining light. Uh -huh. And he was looking for a season to rejoice in his life. Right. But I have greater witness than that of John. Jesus said, I got some witness. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, I don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I just don't believe it. He said, the first witness I'm going to call to the stand is John. Yeah. 
John the Baptist was a witness for Jesus because he was a forerunner. He went in front of Jesus to let everybody know Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Amen. You know, if, if, if Biden come here and he gonna come in this building, it's gonna be people here three weeks before Biden even get here. They're gonna be looking under the benches. They're gonna make sure that there's nothing to harm him. But here comes the Son of God. He had to have a forerunner. That forerunner was Jesus. But he had a witness. What else did he have? He's got another witness. For the works which I, which the Father had given me to finish, the same works I do, bear witness of me. Jesus did. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. Jesus called, called through two fish and five loaves. Let me see you do that. that. Those were witnesses that he was who he said he was. Right. You know, somebody could say what they want to say. I can say I got a million dollars in the bank, brother. <laughs> Well, unless I got a bank book with all them zeros with a number in front of them, I'm just lying. <laughs> what else? And the Father himself, which is... He had another witness. God himself is a witness. That's right. You remember Matthew chapter 17 with a, a bright cloud shout overshadowed them? Mm -hmm. And he said, this is my beloved son right. and who I'm well pleased. You listen to him. How many witnesses do we need to show that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Mm. What else, brother? You have neither heard of his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Right. And ye have not his word abiding in you. Uh -huh. For whom he has sent, he believe not. Uh huh. Search the scriptures. Another witness. Yes. There's a witness right here. Yes. You want to know who Jesus Christ is? Search the scriptures. How many, let me ask you this. How many witnesses do you need to believe that Jesus, sorry about that, bro. That, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. How many witnesses do you need? Because you got everything you need, right? Because you know, brother, brother Jones got that, that old three phone, right? That second generation phone, you know. What else he got, bro? Uh -huh. You know, in the Jewish system, you couldn't be you couldn't be convicted unless you had two or three, you had to be by the mouth, the mouth of two or three witnesses. So Jesus is showing you, even by two or three witnesses, that He is the Son of God. Maybe there'll be someone to come down this aisle today. Give me a hand, give Christ your heart. Say, Brother Jackson, I know you proved that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he said, upon this rock, I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I know he only built one, Brother Jackson. And I want to be added mm -hmm. to the church that you can read about in the Bible. Yes, sir. You know, one time I was at this occasion, and this lady preacher, she pulled me to the side, and she told me, she said, you know, the, uh, what was that organization? Uh, I forget what organization it was. Uh, the Methodists. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, the Methodists, in order to be the preacher, you have to have a master's degree. Master's degree. <laughs> You know, you couldn't be the preacher without a master's degree. Well, it's just one problem. Can't find methods in the Bible. I can't find methods in the You can have a doctorate degree. But if it's not in the Bible, it's not in the Bible. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that Jesus Christ said upon his rock, I shall build my church in the gates of hell. And once you become a Christian, you're held to a higher standard. You're going to live like somebody and act like somebody. You're not going to spit in people's face. You're not going to have these off-color jokes about this or that. You're not going to use four-letter words. You're going to start trying to conduct yourself the way God would have you to conduct yourself. But you're going to remember that it's God is the one that's changing. You're going to remember it's not in of yourself that you're somebody and you're something great. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you wouldn't be nothing. Amen. The Bible said our, all of our righteousness is as a filthy rag. That appeals to you. What you need to do is come down this aisle. Give your hand, give Christ your heart. If you're a Christian, have been living right, you need to repent of those things. As together we stand, sing the song of invitation. Just as I am.
thank you for visiting the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Hope to see you again soon.